Hello guys, what is going on? Welcome back to my channel. One thing I've realised that I always do is whenever I say welcome back to my channel, I turn my head over this way. I don't know why. Honestly, I swear to God, go back to my videos and check because I fully do it in every single video. Anyway, thank you so much for being here today. I hope you guys are well. In today's video, I thought it would be really fun to do almost like a throwback. Oh, first of all, the reason my eye is still fucked is because from my last video to now, it's been about an hour. I'm actually going away tomorrow, so I'm pre-filming a few videos. I've actually filmed three videos today and I'll be filming one tomorrow. So for four of my videos, I will have this, this burden. This this uninvited guest on my eye. So we're all just gonna have to live with it, unfortunately. Anyway, my idea for today's video was to do a full face of products that were very like hyped in the last year or very hyped when they got released that maybe like don't have the same amount of hype around them anymore. I feel like within the community there are products and brands that have like constant hype and there are products that launch which have like a really good longevity. People are always talking about them even like a year or two down the line. They are still essentially hyped products even though they have been on the market for a while. And then there are those products, <laughs> there are those products that are launched and everyone goes fucking crazy about them and they just like don't get the attention for very long. Now I don't know if this is something that happens because of like brand trips or paid posts or any of that stuff but there are a few products who get a very short-lived hype about them and then there are products which just naturally kind of like lose the hype as time goes on as better products are released as the brand kind of loses popularity or gains popularity in another section there's a whole different bunch of reasons so I just wanted to like throw a bunch of products together that I really don't see people talk about anymore for one reason or the other be it good be it bad be it just like the way it goes naturally some of these products are really cool some of them are near and dear to my heart some of them I am honestly guilty of like really really hyping and then in the next breath just like never speaking about them again Comment down below if you can count how many times I say hype or hyping or hyped in this video So if anything I've said makes sense and <laughs> Interests you then definitely go ahead and keep watching if you enjoyed please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel If you want to subscribe to my channel and let's go ahead and jump straight into the video because it's 7 30 p.m And I have another video to do after this Okay guys, so I'm going to start out with a skin product first, then I'll do eyes, then I'll come back to actually do like base. But I just want to give this product some time to soak into my skin. And what I'm talking about is the Nivea Men Aftershave Balm. I can't even remember when it was, maybe like last year. I don't think it was the year before. Maybe it was. Time flies. Was it 2016 or 17? If you know, let me know because I have no fucking idea. But Miss Tutorials mentioned this product and the whole internet went crazy about it. I myself like bought into the hype so much. There were so many videos on this as a first impressions or as as, like a product mentioned in the video there was actually videos that were like solely dedicated to this and then there were videos that were solely dedicated to why you shouldn't use this it was crazy i think nivea had like the highest sales in all of history whenever this was mentioned so i'm going to take a little bit of this on my hands and honestly no bullshit this looks like jizz so i'm going to work that into my skin it smells like a men's locker room or like a gym this is a product that like away from makeup i used to use all the time just because i used to actually like shave my face and then would use this after i don't particularly like blade shaving my face i hate actually like hate. Just because my skin is super sensitive and it does tend to really fucking irritate it. So now I just shave with like an electric razor. So I've still got like a zero kind of beard, like a zero length beard, but it's still a little bit of like just a little bit of something. The reason this blew up the way it did is because everyone was talking about glycerin and glycerin in the aftershave balm was like the first or second most used ingredient and apparently glycerin was really good for helping makeup stick to your skin or something like that. Later everyone found out that excessive amounts of glycerin on the skin is comedogenic and blocks your pores. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that's why no one really uses it anymore. Okay so I'm gonna start on my eyes, I'm gonna zoom you guys in right now and I get a close-up shot of my sty. So the first product I'm using on my eyes today is the MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. I literally don't see anybody talking about this anymore. I know Nikki was a huge fan of this for a very long time. I think the thing with this was it was just a case that genuinely better products came along. I think now we have like the P. Louise base and things like that, which in my opinion are a lot better products. So I really don't think there was anything like negative behind this. I myself used to use this all the time. And then I kind of switched to concealer just because it was a lot easier. And I basically found that concealer just worked better for me. And then obviously now I use P. Louise all the time. And that's the case sometimes with makeup, like something can come out and be the most incredible product ever. And then a couple of months down the line and something is replacing it. Okay, I'm about to go in and do shadow on top of this without setting it. And I've never actually done that before with Soft Ochre. I'm not sure if you can do it. Fuck it, let's do it. The palette I'm using today is the Modern Renaissance from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This was, to me, like one of the most hyped eyeshadow palettes of all time. And as you can see, it is pretty okay loved from me. Obviously I was a fucking huge fan of Love Letter, which is the shade I'm gonna take right now. 
Now, I used to be obsessed with this palette, even beyond obsessed. I used this so much and so often that it got to the point where I was like, I can't use this anymore because I'm not using anything else. Okay, right off the bat, I prefer P. Louise. Maybe this is the reason why no one uses you anymore. Soft ochre. Dude, that looks so dull. I haven't actually done a cut crease in a while, so I might do that. I feel like by in a while, it's been like a week. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the shades Real Girl and Burnt Orange. I really don't know how well this is gonna blend. I haven't used this palette in so long, man. Now I'm taking the shade Cypress Umber. Honestly, this isn't like as bomb as I remember it being. And I don't know if that's because of the soft ochre or because I've just used so many better products since this came out. But I'm using this now and I'm kind of thinking, what was the fuss about? Honestly, if this came out now, like, I think it's cute and whatever, but I wouldn't go out and scream about it. <laughs> I feel a little disappointed. But anyway, I'm just gonna go with some concealer and cut my crease. Bam. So I'm just gonna pick up some of the shade Vermeer. Go and put that all over my lid. Okay then, so I'm gonna quickly catch up on this side and I'll be right back to do my skin. Okay, so I just finished my eyes, I'm gonna start out with my base. So for foundation, I'm gonna be using the Dermacol Makeup Cover. Now this definitely had its moment this year. I think it was this year. I on like I honestly swear to God, I don't know where I am. I don't know what happened what year, so I'm just gonna say this year. Everyone went crazy about the most full coverage foundation in existence. And then there was debate about whether this was foundation or concealer. So this definitely had its moment, like I said. I have only used this like once or twice and I can't actually see what shade I got. 207? So after this like had its 15 minutes, I literally haven't seen a single person mention it since. But honestly, I'm not sure anyone requires this level of coverage from a foundation like on a daily basis. I'm a full coverage motherfucker, you guys know. And I think even for me, this is an unnecessary amount of coverage for day-to-day -day wear. I actually really like this foundation though. I think it's really good. I remember this color being a little bit too dark for me, so you'll just have to excuse that. But I do genuinely think if you apply this foundation in the right way and you just don't go like overboard with it it's got a really beautiful finish obviously the coverage is a one phenomenal but what it actually looks like on the skin is really really nice so obviously this really just isn't my color but that aside i think this foundation is so beautiful so it would be cool to see some more people talking about it and it actually would be a good idea of me to use it more often so i'm gonna make a mental note to myself to maybe buy the correct shade onto concealer i'm gonna be taking the soft matte complete concealer from nars i remember when this came out so many people were talking about it and now I just like there's the odd couple but I really don't see many people speaking about it I have used this a couple of times and I do really like it it's not my favorite concealer like on the market by any means but it is a really good one so I'm literally just gonna like stab my sponge in there my only thing with this concealer is the shade I wish was like a little bit brighter I get the shade Chantilly which is the lightest one and the same with the NARS creamy concealer it definitely does work for me as an undry concealer but I do like concealers with a little bit of brightness to them to set my face I'm gonna be taking the original RCMA no color powder all of you guys should know this was such a hyped product like this was huge I think it was Jaclyn Hill who was the first person to mention this with like a really big platform and so again it was just one of those products that like blew up i was definitely one of those people that bought into this i have been through like three or four of these and i currently have about three or four of them as well now i really don't use it as often just because i found powders that work a lot better for me and plus i went through like a huge stage of really not using too much powder i think the reason i went through so many bottles is because i used to pack on powder like so heavily i think everyone actually stopped using it because it's essentially just talc which obviously isn't the best for your skin or like your lungs or anything really like i said i really don't use it as much I kind of just like it's one of those things that I keep near just in case I just quickly need to grab it because I know how it works and it's fast and it's translucent and it's easy but it's really not one of those products that I use all too often and I can kind of see why the hype around it has died down to bronze my cheeks up I'm gonna be taking the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil bronzer which is this guy right here honestly this one is more for like me I have hyped this up a lot over the last like year or two partly because it's fucking beautiful and stunning and I've noticed that as of recent I just haven't been using using it as much. I'm not too sure why because I do still think it's 
definitely one of my favorites but I think I have just been liking some others maybe a little bit more so this one is more so I mean there obviously has been a decline in mentions of this particular bronze that I have noticed this one is mainly for me just because I really don't hype it up as much as I used to but I do still really really love it I guess a couple of others could be maybe like the ABH bronzers or the Marc Jacobs bronzer I really don't see many people talk about that anymore and I did used to notice that that got a lot of mentions Hula? I don't really see people mention Hula anymore. Or maybe they do and I'm just like not subscribed to those people. I'm honestly really struggling with highlighter. I don't know what was super hype that is now not. I mean, I guess maybe like a glow kit from Anastasia. I honestly, I don't know. I really can't think of one that's had the hype that say RCA may have like something really, really huge that just like completely died down. I just... I can't think of any. Okay, I'm just gonna go with Moonchild Glow Kit. I mean, everyone used to talk about Glow Kits all the time. I used to use Glow Kits. The Gleam Glow Kit in particular, I used to use every single day. I can almost guarantee that for the first year and a half of me doing makeup, every single post was me in a Gleam Glow Kit. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a couple of shades out of this. I think like Blue Ice and Pink Heart, which are these two shades. Now, I used to love glow kits, but these aren't like as wow as I remember them being. Maybe that's why no one really talks about them anymore. But I do think it is a case of like product development is so strong that something like this maybe like a year or two ago would have been incredible. Whereas now you have highlighters that are so reflective that you really don't even consider like highlighters like this as amazing anymore, if that makes sense. Like I think that is still gorgeous, but that to me is not as impressive, I think, as like when it first came out. I'm going to take a little bit of How Many Carrots from Fenty Beauty. This is the diamond bomb highlighter just because i kind of think the same about this like this had really major hype when it came out and this is like a pretty recent launch considering and now it's just like nobody talks about it or well, not anyone that i've seen again like throughout this video these are products that i've just personally seen a decline in mentions of it's not necessarily like fact i feel like my highlighter game is so weak today okay one last go i'm gonna take everglow from ofra and nick tutorials i'm just gonna take the lightest shade and then for blush, I would definitely say the Jouer ones and Luminosa from Milani. I was actually watching Jacqueline Hill's video the other day where she went like drugstore shopping. And she even said in that video, like she used to be obsessed with Luminosa and mentioned it all the time. And she almost like basically forgot about it. This is honestly one of my favorite blushes ever. So for me, personally, it hasn't lost its hype. But I feel like as a whole for like everyone, it kind of has. And then Jouer, I feel like in particular, even as a brand, I don't like hear many people talk about them. Considering Jouer blew up so quickly. I don't know, I feel like I just don't see as many people mentioning their products as a whole anymore. i tell you what I could have used for highlight was Becca. The Shimmer and Skin Perfectors are something I never really hear anyone speak about anymore. Obviously made wildly popular with Champagne Pop, which I don't even know if that's a thing anymore. Is Champagne Pop even still a thing? I, I don't know. But anyway, blush, I'm going to take a little bit of the Adore Blush Duo from Jouer, like I said. Then I'm going to take a little dash of Luminoso. Fucking love Luminoso so much. I just love blush in general. I know it's not everyone's thing, but I go so overboard with it because I fucking love it. Okay, so this next one is probably the one out of, like, all of the products in today's video that I was really, like... Dude, no one fucking talks about this anymore. And that is the Benefit Bad Gal Bang Mascara. Honest to God, just before this launch, this was probably the most hyped, anticipated launch ever. Literally everyone in the entire, like, YouTube, Instagram community was taken away by Benefit. People were taken to the Maldives. They were taken to somewhere in America that I can't actually remember for the launch of this. Everyone and their freaking mother was saying how revolutionary this mascara was and how it's probably the best thing to ever happen to the makeup industry industry because honestly it's just a mascara and it's not even that good it just seemed like everyone was talking about it because they got a free holiday because i could probably count on my hand how many times this mascara has been mentioned since and i mean obviously if a brand is taking you away like that you are going to mention it i remember when this was launching and literally like everybody was wondering what it could be what could benefit be launching there was like a countdown timer there was so much anticipation and it turned out to be uh, a mascara and i think when it launched i felt the entire makeup community just go oh okay it was just it was such a weird build up for a mascara and when you compare it to something like roller lash which is another one of benefits mascaras i feel like roller lash has had longevity and i still even now see a lot more people talk about that than bad gal bang 
So I'm just going to head on to a pair of lashes super quick. For lips, I'm going to be taking the Long Wear Lip Cream and Liquid Lipstick from Jouer. Again, like I said earlier, Jouer, to me, it just seems like one of those brands that overall in general has lost hype. I just remember seeing, and it wasn't even that long ago, I remember seeing everybody talk about Jouer, their highlighters and their lip products especially. And now it's just hardly anybody, unless, and I mean this in like the least shady way possible, unless it's like a new launch and someone's promoting a discount code. I really don't see many people talking about them. So this one is in the shade Tawny Rose and it's so, so gorgeous. And then I'm going to be taking Kim at KW from Charlotte Tilbury. I have actually used this in a recent video. Dude, this is probably the most hyped up lip product in the world. There was a point when this was literally mentioned in every single YouTuber's favourites videos. Okay, so I know I think those two products together are beautiful. But yeah, this was literally mentioned in like everyone's favorite videos at the same time. Coincidence or nah? To finish off this lip, I'm going to be taking the Skinny Dip Lip Topper from Jouer. Again, a really massively talked about lip product. And again, another side note, this is beautiful. I used to be completely obsessed with this product. Okay then guys, so that is the very end of today's video. I am obsessed with how this look turned out, honestly. I absolutely fucking love it. So those are just some products that I personally feel like I don't really see mentioned anymore. And it seems like such a shame just because obviously they're good products. Again, my opinion. But unfortunately, like I said earlier, that's just the way it is sometimes. Some products do get switched out for better ones. And then some just happen to have longevity and maintain hype within the makeup community. But obviously everything is about growth and progression. And and brands nowadays are constantly churning out like so many new products that it's kind of easy to understand how some products just get like forgotten about. Anyway, I really, really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up for me. Subscribe to my channel if you like to subscribe to my channel. Of course, if you think of any products that maybe have been forgotten about over the months slash years, then let me know in the comments. You guys know I love hearing from you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you and I will hopefully catch you in my next one. Bye guys.